Okay, so as I was saying, I'm, I'm a principal lecturer at Sheffield Business School in Sheffield Hallam University in Sheffield, surprisingly enough. Now, you will notice that between that slide where it says embedding digital skills certification, I've actually changed it slightly to enhancing graduate employability through embedding skills. Yeah, because of the fact that that is what our principal aim was of doing this, and this is the reason we actually started doing this process. So, why do digital skills matter? Okay, well, it's not about where we are now, it's about where we are in the future. It's about what skills our students will need when they leave the university. Yep. Students coming in now, at level four, first year, in four years' time, what will they need? Yeah, so we don't necessarily need to be focusing on what skills we actually need at this moment in time, it's what we need somewhere, at some point in the future. The jobs of the future, we don't know what skills they all need yet. There'll be jobs that we don't even envisage at the moment in 10 years' time. So we've got to make our students ready for that sort of market. Which is exactly what Richard Riley said, along the same lines. He just copied my words. Uh, he didn't know I'd said it first, but now he does. Okay, so one of the big things is um, what sorts of jobs, how many jobs are going to need digital skills. And it's an ever-growing market. Even s simple things, which we always say to students, it doesn't matter what job you do, you will need some digital skills. You will need to be able to do certain things. And many a student turns around to me at level four, says, I don't like Excel, Jane. And I said, love it or hate it, it doesn't matter, you're going to use it for the rest of your life. All right, so get on with it. <laughs> don't mince me words. All right, um, there is a growing skills gap and I always, it always amuses me because we talk about students being very savvy with digital skills and yet I personally have experienced during my time in higher education, which I've been in about 12, 15 years, between then and now the, the skills gap is getting bigger in that not just between the jobs wanting the skills and we haven't got the students that have all got the skills, but also between the most able and the least able in your in intakes. Because we used to have that people were pretty much sort of a similar ilk when they came in. Now we have extremes, I, I feel. Some students seem to have no skills, and this is getting ever more increasingly obvious with the fact that we're going into more international markets, and we're getting students who haven't had access to those digital skills up until now. So we find that the gap between the most able and the least able students is also increasing, as well as for the jobs that are requiring digital skills. Now, I've said the most sought after employability skills. This is a list of the, the, the top ones, top 20. And although uh, Prodigy Learning very kindly have highlighted Microsoft Office and Microsoft PowerPoint for me, I would also say that there's other things which are in here, like the analytical skills, analytical skills which I use in my modules and students are using the digital skills for those but there's also loads of those other things that all still require digital skills again uh, courtesy of Prodigy they've come out with um, some Microsoft skills in demand and what sorts of skills are in demand and where they're in demand and how number of, uh, number of jobs in various different areas. They've picked up some random places, including Sheffield, a bit weird that. And then they've picked some just random cities about how many jobs are actually out there in the market that are requiring the Microsoft skills. Okay, all these slides are available afterwards. So why are digital skills important? Now, there's various things that have been produced by the government. There's the digital skills um, for the UK economy, which came out in last year, I think, January of last year, which was highlighting the shortage of digital skills that they thought were going to arise. And they thought that there was going to be a bigger gap between the number of jobs. They're also consciously aware that the fact that digital skills are one thing, but you've got to continuously improve your digital skills because they're constantly changing, more demands have been made of you. 
Um, there's also uh, a lot more digital data analysis going on. So there's massive data sets now that the requirements are that people go into those jobs where they're actually analysing all that data and doing things with it. So there's very few jobs now which don't require some digital skills and particularly digital skills of data analysis. There's also the post-16 skills plan, which came out in July, uh, which goes through um, a kind of like a, a apprenticeship type thing, where as well as the maths and the English being the basic core skills, they are also identifying digital skills as being a core skill as well now. So that students going forward have got to, are expected to have these skills developing a long way. The final one which I've highlighted is the industrial strategy, which um, it says that the, the, what they want really to do is to establish um, a kind of technical education system, which is about creating people who can do, use those equipment, use those digital skills to actually be able to do the jobs that they're wanting to do. So whereas your apprenticeships in the past were more your practical <coughs> building, electrical stuff, things like that, now we're talking about actually technical courses which are digital skill orientated to be able to suit the markets that are going to be there going forwards. So, the one that I always go on to my students about is employability and the fact that on your CV, if you get Microsoft accreditation it's on your CV, you've evidenced it. Yeah? Otherwise, how does that employer know that you've actually got those digital skills? It's fine you turning around and saying, yeah, I'm good at Excel, but if you've got actually a certification in it, it means that you're actually proving and evidencing it. Um, some of the skills um, that students uh, get out of doing the micro certification is that um, one of the things it does is it also demonstrates to employers that they are committing themselves to, doing, to, de to developing themselves. Yeah, so it's an evidence of that. So not just the certification for the skills, but also evidence that we're actually going above and beyond just their university course. So we're doing additional things. Um, it also tends to build confidence in students. The fact that they not only have got that certification, but they can evidence it and they can talk about it and they can talk about why they did it. So interviews and things like that. Um, the certifications are associated with a higher level of pay. Um, we have um, degree apprenticeships at our university, which came in this last year, and we have a lot of major corporate clients. And one of the things that those students have said when they've come along and done my module, which I'll tell you a bit more about in a minute, and they've actually got this certification, they've gone through that process, when they've gone back to their own workplace, they've become the go-to person for those skills. And then they've got rewarded for that because their, their managers, etc., or the higher up, the uh, hierarchy, have turned around and said, well, you know, can you do this? Can you do some training on this? Can you, do, can you help this? And then they've actually got pay rises and they've got different jobs. The jobs have changed. So already within one year of them being introduced, some of those people have gone on and actually changed their job role because of the, getting that certification. Um, about, I think it's something like 91% of employers um, see that the certificate is the biggest thing that will make the difference between them employing someone or not if they're saying they've got Excel skills or Microsoft skills. Yeah? Um, we often find that... Uh, employers, when we go out on placement visits and what have you, it's the main thing that they talk about that make a difference with our students because they're going out with Excel skills. So they can hit the ground running and quite often when they go out on placements, they're doing stuff because they've got the Excel skills and then when they come back from placement, they've already been offered a job because they've proved that they can do the stuff for them. So we're already not at ground level when they go into the organisation. So a little bit about um, Microsoft. Yeah, basically it's in 160 countries, 26 languages, <coughs> 2 million certifications. So it's a worldwide acknowledged 
skills. Yeah, so we have an awful lot of international students in our business school, and quite often we can't sell certain things that we do in the UK, so that some of our uh, accountancy qualifications, the fact that they can get those accredited as well, don't count so much for them because it's not their recognised qualification. Microsoft is recognised worldwide. Um, with regard to what we do, we actually provide them with the, we get, get them to do a certification, we give them a certificate. Students, surprisingly enough, are quite old school about that. They like having <coughs> that piece of paper. But they do get the digital badges. And those digital badges can be immediately just imported into their LinkedIn profile, Facebook, whatever they want to, WhatsApp. It's up to them. They can transport it across. And it provides that electronic badging and that electronic notification of what skills they've demonstrated by getting that qualification. So an employer can see that straight away on LinkedIn or whatever or they can just share it with whoever's in, uh, going, doing the interview with them. So, why did we start this journey? This is oh, now to the shoe bit, the Sheffield Hallam University bit. We started this journey, and I think from what, <laughs> when I actually was asked to do this presentation, I looked back at some slides where I knew I'd done something to do with this accreditation, and it was back in 2014-15, which was what, well before Andrew, I think it was your predecessor. And we were going through a revalidation of our accountancy courses. And as part of that revalidation of our accountancy courses, we were aligning with all the professional bodies. So we were aligning, aligning with the AC, ACCA, ICE, W, etc. to get the accreditations of that. Um, we'd got an increase in demand from employers to actually do something to do with more skills to do with the Excel. So although we took them all to a certain level, they said, we'd like more of that. We'd like them to go to the higher level. We'd like them to be able to do, for instance, pivot tables and things like that, which aren't in the core syllabus. Um, it was also when the increased fees came in and students you know, were suddenly balking at having to pay so much. So it was part of that student offer. We thought it's a bit of added value for them that they're actually getting the certification because they get the certification with us free of charge. It's just an add-in to that student offer. And obviously it increases their employability chances, so therefore we can sell it on those bases. What do we actually do? We actually do only Excel at the moment, and we do Excel Core generally at level four, and then we do Excel Expert at level five, unless they've not got the core at level four, in which case they do level core at level five. All right, that's first in and second year. We have got plans that we might expand it further, but everything's a, an evolving scale. So how did we implement it? We started off with, as I said, the accountancy students. So all our accountancy courses have got a module which became financial analysis for business. It started off as business analysis, which was my module. It then got hybrided into financial analysis for business, and we integrated Microsoft into it. They already were doing the Excel skills as part of the module, but this was actually just integrating the actual testing so they actually could get the certification. Also, as I said, the employees were wanting a higher level of skill, so we introduced a non-credit bearing level five module, so second year of accountancy courses, that everyone was is expected to do. So this, you were talking about 400 students at this time. Yes, 200 at level four, 200 at level five. So that was the first year. We then thought, well, hold on. The sister module, data analysis, which is my module, which is the bigger module, which was on the all the business and business and courses, which is another 500 plus students. Um, they do data analysis of business decisions, the same module. So we introduced it to there as well. Now, we just introduced it and said, you've got this option. You're not obliged to do it. 
It's mainly self-managed, do they? We will do the testing. You've got options of when you do the testing. You can tell us when you're ready. All very pink and fluffy. <coughs> yeah? We've got some take up. Keen ones. Not as much to keep take up as we'd <coughs> like. So we refined it a bit and we kind of more integrated it into the module. So there was an introductory session and then there was a supported session and then there was the actual testing session. And then we decided that we, various people were expressing their interest around, around the, the business school on different courses, different departments. So we thought we'd got to refine this offer and say, well, what, what do we need to deliver as a minimum to these students to actually help them get through this accreditation? So we developed a pattern which was basically an introductory session, one or two hours, a supported session, one or two hours, where they do a pra final practice test of practice test three. And then the third one was the actual testing slot. That's what we said was the basic minimum of what needed to be delivered to students to enable them to do their certification. Obviously, in my module, it was different because they were doing the Excel schools alongside it. But the modules that came on board were ones which were doing, wanting to develop <coughs> those skills or had got some of those Excel skills in there already. Um, so that's when we started rolling it out to these other departments and involving different modules. So we extended it into all these other modules. So um, it was in business analytics, it was in market and digital analysis, professional skills in business economics, management competencies in economics, and all sorts of things like this. So it's Mainly the work-based ones in the, other, in the other areas. Not so much particular modules, which were technical modules. And then um, we also said, we, the, the next year along, we said, you need to refine it a bit more. And we, what we started setting in was little goalposts for students. Practice test one should be submitted by this date. And we used to set up a submission point for them to give the evidence that they were actually achieving 80% in that test. And then practice test two, and this is on what the students had asked for. They said, we would like to have known where we should be along the way. So uh, this morning, when, uh, or earlier, when they were talking about um, students doing it when they were ready, this is about giving them some stage posts to actually get them to be ready. Okay, and the final practice test is a supported one in a session. Um, so, by this stage, we're talking about this last year we had, for data analysis, there was 465 <laughs> students signed up to Geometrics. Geometrics is, the, I'll now go through this in a second, Geometrics is a practice test. 198 financial analysis for business, 248 for business analytics, market and digital analysis had 79 and professional skills in business economics had 100. So I think it was somewhere in the region of about 1,300 students signed up to starting practicing doing these MOS skills. Okay. Uh, then at level five, we had another probably about 250, because obviously then it only went into a couple of modules at level five. At the end of the year, we had a celebration last year and this year. Last year was quite small, wasn't it, Andrew? Um, it was uh, probably just about 95 that came along last year. But, and this year, there was about, I think, 160. Say again? Yeah, something like that, 175. Yeah, and we're going to make this celebration event because students come along, have a celebration, you'll see some pictures. And they sort of sit around, have a drink, get awarded the certificates, have a nice social time, have a little chat, and then pop off. Not literally. <laughs> I hasten to add. As I say, it's still ongoing. That's why seven is dot, dot, dot. Because we're still refining what we're doing. It's all been a di uh, you know, refining curve. So this is the end-to-end um, -end kind of facility that uh, Prodigy offer you. We do not um, use the academy bit. 
as I said, ours is about self-managed study. So we introduce it as tutors and they then get onto geometrics. We get them all registered with geometrics. They all start practicing on geometrics. And then, as I say, we've got these signposts as to when they submit certain pieces. If you practice step one, two, or three, showing that they're getting 80% in them. We don't do the um, academy bit. And then the final practice test is a supported session about two weeks before the actual test. And then we do the certification exam. Okay? Now, it's been very structured this last year, so we've done it in seminar groups, and it's still the same next year. So literally, each seminar group has a designated testing slot. They know when it is, right from the beginning of the year. This next year, we're going to semesterization, which is adding an, an intrigue to this. So we're actually going to do the <coughs> test after the exams for this end of the first semester because we feel otherwise, if we do it before that, we'll be under too much pressure and they'll probably the uptake won't be as good. So, what have we learned? It's all about planning. You've got to decide what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. And you've got to get buy-in from people. Yeah? You need to be sure on what you're doing. This is why we, as I say, it's an iterative plan hours. It's been moving on each year. The training. The training is very important for your staff. And this is one stage that I'm saying is going to be our next development bit, is because we've noticed a marked difference in the take-up from students, depending on whose staff introduced it. Yeah? Um, so it is quite important that staff are trained on, on what they're doing, why they're doing it, how important it is. Um, We've learned that students actually gain an awful lot of confidence from doing this. I've had students who've turned around and said, I really do feel, is there any chance to do the next level up? And if they're not on a course which actually has that opportunity, we're trying to develop opportunities for them to be able to get the expert level because they are wanting it. The ones who are keen and, and, and we set those expectations. We say, you know, for you to get this is, is not an easy thing, and especially when you get onto the expert, but we've had students who've um, done all sorts of things like said, well, I've, I'm, okay, I've done it, our, our system's still on 2013. And we, lots of students said, well, I want to do 16. Can I do it on my own laptop? Good. You can get both of them. Every year we review what we're doing and we decide whether we're going to do anything differently. So I can tell you some of those things that we're going to be doing in the future, all right? Because we have learned some lessons this year, even more than last year. So what impact do we get? We get that they, they have the confidence, they can do things, they do feel they can do things. And suddenly, actually passing a test in Excel, <coughs> oh, that scary Excel is actually all right, isn't it? <laughs> I've got a certificate in it now. Um, the engagement, as I say, engagement has been an issue at start. Engagement is growing each year. Students are coming back from placements particularly and feeding back into the first years and saying, get it, get it because you won't offer it you when you come back from placement. And those are the words. Because we, we as we say, because we're delivering in modules. Um, they feed on to other students, they feed back. Feed back every year. Make sure you get the Excel certification next time. You know, when you've got the chance, don't miss out on it. Um, and it's already shown <laughs> to have a big impact on our employability. Because yeah, loads of our employers are taking on our students based on their Excel skills. So, so where do we go next? Well, first of all, within the business school, we want to expand it completely. There's certain people keep coming up to me and saying, Jane, this sounds brilliant. Can we put it in one of our employability modules? We need to get a more holistic view around the, the business school itself. We've got it into most departments in some way, shape, or form, but it needs to be more joined up so that everyone gets that opportunity, not just if you, depending on which courses you're on and things like that. The university as a whole. Lots of people in other, dip, in other faculties have mentioned that they would like to do this. Staff have said they would like to do this. Yeah? Years and years ago, we had what was called the IT founder who used to do these certifications for staff. 
and um, I can remember going to it myself. And this was ha how I actually first got engaged with doing this was because I talked to the guy and he said, oh, you know, it only works out a small amount per license. So for a nominal amount per student using the geometrics package and the testing software, it works out as a, a minute amount. Sorry, I'm, I'm saying you're a minute amount for degree learning, but hey, it is. Um, so we want to get staff actually developing the skills and finally, we're wanting to go more down the line of bring your own device. Yeah, so that students are coming in and getting it, getting those skills on whatever device they've got. So we're not beholden to our system um, from a learning point of view, because you can download the software onto their own devices easy enough. Um, you just need to refine the, doing the testing on, on the devices themselves. Um, and then onwards and upwards. Next year, I'm going to take over Microsoft. <laughs> Did I not tell you that bit? Um, no. That's next year. So you'll see my, you can see my badge. I'm a Microsoft Office specialist. What was it? A digital, digital evangelist. <laughs> yeah. I mean, one of the things that employees have said is it's not necessarily, yes, they do like the Excel skills, but it's also showing <coughs> the logical thinking behind Excel that it is actually one of the powerful things. And being able to use it and apply it in different situations. And that's how I use it in my module. My module is not about learning the skills of Excel. It's about using it, doing cash flows and doing forecasting models and doing modeling on there. So we use it quite actively. So this just supports that, because this teaches them some of the skills to actually support that. Certification celebration, yeah? This was our prize winner this year, 100% in 23 minutes, 20 something minutes. Very shy girl, the most confident I've ever seen her. She wasn't going to go to the celebration event because she was a bit silly when we told her. And she, can I bring some of my friends? Some of them didn't do the certification. Yeah, bring your friends, bring whoever you need. And she was over the moon, wasn't she? And uh, she also got a little beautiful plaque. And Zuena with some of her staff, uh, some of her students. And it was a lovely event. And we. Um, encourage you to do things like this because it celebrates their successes and the students were really delighted to have a, some food and drinks and be part of that celebration. Okay, any questions? Um, have you used any of the students such as the one you showed there as mentors for some of the other students who might be struggling for example? Not so far. It is one of our ambitions to do with digital skills full stop. Um, we want to use current students to, to help support other students. So this is something we're looking at. Um, I'm just wondering, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, who does the proctoring? Is it like a central team or? No, it's, um, it's my teaching staff. Um, so I teach this rather large module, um, and it's sister module, two sister modules. So we have um, about 900 students between the three modules, um, and we have a teaching staff of about 20 who teach on there. And all those staff introduce and do the prop training. exams. Right, okay, that's interesting. What kind of, um, are you, are you, do you have like a, a regular network with PCs? Is the software installed on those PCs? Um, we have it through, um, our technical team have put it through Apps Anywhere. We have um, Apps Anywhere, which you brings up apps, various different apps, and you just launch it onto different machines for the G-metrics. For the actual um, exam, that's, um, we just go through the normal portal. Right, okay. I'll maybe come and get more information yeah. from you. Thank you. I'm coming. <laughs> I'll go to the back first, then I'll come to you, Lorraine. Come around this side. 
Sorry, I feel I've neglected you. I've been mainly that side. <laughs> Hello. Can you just clarify whether they are timetabled in the programme? So they're yeah. actually timetabled sessions? Yeah, they are. Wow. Um, could you imagine if they weren't timetabled, you would still get the uptake from students? Well, that's how we did them the first time round. <laughs> Um, okay. That's why we developed them and integrated them more, embodied them more in the, in the modules, mm. because we found that when we gave them options, it always confused things. Yeah. Um, and then we kept getting students saying, oh, can, can I do next Tuesday? Um, and things like that. And uh, are there no more testing slots? Yeah. Um, so it was just easier to have, if the whole seminar group had a session, mm. it was just easier that way. Some of the sessions, it, you know, obviously, depending on take up, but I mean, one of the things we found is that when it went to other modules which weren't our modules, the introduction <coughs> of, the, of it wasn't terribly good. So the buy in from some of those modules isn't as good as it is in the main module. Mm. Um, so, what we've this is one of the things going forward is we're talking about having the team that delivers on my module. Um, being the one who introduces it to every, everything, even though it will be quite a kind of workload for burden for us. Okay. Um, at least if it's introduced to the students in the right way, because we notice there's a big difference. If someone's really engaged and really active about it and really enthusiastic about it, we've had groups where the take-up has been 100%, down mm -hmm. to groups where four out of 25 has turned up for the actual test okay. in some of these other areas. So it's something that we're, we're literally just discussing at the moment as to whether we have a, a team, a, a kind of like introductory team, who also do the testing. That's really useful. We're just about to go down this route. So after 20 years of ECDL and ECDL Advance, so we're just about to start a pilot, and I take on board a lot of what you've said today. So yeah. thank you. Well, as I say, it's been, it's it's been a big learning curve for mm. us. Um, it came from a little idea, a little acorn, yeah. when I was sat there. In, in a training course for Excel expert. Um, and I thought, well, why can't our students do this? Yeah. Great. Thank you. Last question from Lorraine. I don't know if I'm worthy now. <laughs> um, I just wanted to find out about the different modules, or should I say the different topics. So you chose Excel, and was it Word as well? Was it? No, we just, do, no we just do Excel core and expert so I just wondered are there any um, certifications for like team and office 365 or does that come under the SharePoint I, I don't know if you would know this uh, we, we, we I mean we only we're only doing the Excel at the moment we're looking at what else we want to do um, one of the things that I mean in my big dream yeah okay I kind of like to see a suite of different things that we offer to all students across mm -hmm. the whole university so all our students become digitally skilled students but my dreams have just got to get out there. Okay. It was just that you had a slide and um, you had all, you know, like PowerPoint and yes, that's right. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> so I just... Okay. Oh, they are. Okay. Thank you very much. That's all right. She's answered my question. Oh, that's okay. Lovely. <laughs> thank you. Jane, are you around for a little bit longer today? Yeah. yeah? yeah. Lovely. So Jane will be around. So if you want to ask her any questions, we've, we've run out of time. Okay. Um, so if you want to ask Jane any questions or Prodigy Learning, obviously...